but we start in London with an examination of the sources and nature of violence. Specially commissioned music from the rock band U2 hammers out in the Barbican Theatre. The stage is clad with a blood-red metal surround with sliding panels, giving the scene a brutal futuristic look. Then young Alex, in black tights and jacket, leads on his band of droogs, his name for his gang of thugs who are to rape and murder victims in the course of the evening. This is a clockwork orange. When Anthony Burgess's novel came out in 1962, its violence was criticised, and when a film was made in the early 1970s, it caused a storm of protest. In fact, it's not been shown in this country since. Why exactly? because the hero glories in violence. As we hear now in this disturbing scene where Alex, played by actor Phil Daniels, luxuriates in the sound of Beethoven and in his private language, Nadsat, indulges in a wild fantasy of rape. There were Vex and Petitzas lying on the ground, screaming for mercy in my ha, ha, power, and I was smacking all over my rot and grinding my boot in their litzos. There were divotchkas ripped and creaking against walls, I plunging like a schlager into them. And then, glasses tight shut, rookers behind my gulliver, I broke, spattered, cried, ah, and dropped off to sleep, still with joy, 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 crashing and howling away. <laughs> director Ron Daniels admits that A Clockwork Orange is disturbing. The real danger is that Alex's violence is not mindless. Alex's violence is creative from his point of view. That is the way that he expresses himself. It's aberrant to us, abhorrent, but that is the way that he creates his identity. And what's worse, when challenged, he says, I do what I do because I like to do. Obviously, I'm not presenting a Reader's Digest version of Clockwork Orange. Yeah. The first 20 minutes of the play is violent. Director Ron Daniels. And the whole play is in fact a debate about violence. Michael Billington of The Guardian saw the play with me. What were his reactions? I'm not sure it is entirely about violence. I know Burgess always says it's a theological story. I think fundamentally it is about moral choice and what... Burgess is clearly saying is that you cannot impose goodness on people. You cannot force evil out of them. People have to have the freedom to make up their minds whether to be good or evil. And what he has written, strangely, is an optimistic story, both in the book and this stage version, which ends with Alex maturing out of violence. At the end, he's, he realises the, the possible pleasures of marriage and fatherhood, and he views his violent gang friends with disdain. I think it's almost recklessly optimistic, quite honestly, because I think one of the interesting sociological facts now is that people seem able to combine violence with, a, with an other self. Brief example, the, the gangs of football hooligans who often terrorise our stadiums are often led by people who have jobs, wives, families from Monday to Friday and then on Saturday turn into thugs. That's something that Burgess doesn't take on board in the, in the book. How could he? He didn't know when he wrote the story. In the novel and in the play, Alex, um, after a particularly nasty murder, is actually arrested and uh, sent off to prison. And there he's subjected to these aversion therapies, this idea that you can make people nauseated by violence and therefore prevent them from committing it. And here Burgess seems to be arguing that the state repression of violence in people is almost more evil than the violence itself. I think that's what he is arguing. I don't think he's saying it is happening. I think he's saying this could happen, and should it happen, it would be a bad thing, because, in fact, people have to make up their minds whether they're going to be good or evil, and compelled goodness is worse than evil. He is saying that. But I think that's an abstract theological argument, if you like. In reality, of course, obviously, we, we do want to cure people, and we do want to change people, and we do want to redeem people. But I think what he's offering... What he offered in 1962 was a kind of nightmare vision of the future. My argument would be that the present in which we live is almost as bleak in some ways as that future he was predicting 
For those who saw the film, they'll probably remember Malcolm McDowell as Alex, and he was indeed charismatic, in a way irresistible. I wonder how you feel that uh, Phil Daniels coped with this role, which, after all, the play succeeds or fails on. Well, in the film, which I saw only recently, although it's been banned in Britain for a long time, Malcolm McDowell is a stylish dandy. And I think one of the dangers of the film, and why it is subversive, is that it does enlist your sympathy for Alex. He seems the only vibrant figure, an attractive figure, as you say, on the screen. Phil Daniels is very different, actually. He's a rather bushy-haired, scruffy figure. When he puts on a greatcoat, it hangs loosely about him. When Malcolm McDowell does that on the film, it's a tight Regency fit. So what you're presented with, I think, is a much less attractive figure and a much less sympathetic figure and a much less beguiling figure in the stage version. In that sense, it is truer to uh, Burgess's intentions. I found Phil Daniels quite convincing. He has a sort of... Um, scruffy, artful, dodger quality, so that although you don't find him sympathetic, you just about find him bearable company for the whole evening. Well, perhaps the most striking thing about this production at the Barbican is the very modern style it's been given. We've got a score by Bono and The Edge, we've got choreography, we've got dancing in the show, almost like a futuristic musical. I found the group scenes worked very well. One reason for that is Richard Hudson's extraordinary set, which is a red, blood-red, semicircular steel surround through which objects suddenly appear. So you get a giant size milk bottle, you get a giant size angle poise lamp, making the human figures look rather Lilliputian, which I think is the intention. I thought the choreography, both in the Corova milk bar and in the group violence scenes was extremely well done, rather like a futuristic version of West Side Story, if you can imagine that. Critic Michael Billington.